What a great song. My goodness, what a great song. A great God, a great song to sing of a great God. And uh, if you hadn't got your singer on, well then maybe a little bit you'll get your singer back on. Because I'll tell you what, you can't have a Thanksgiving without songs, and I'm going to give you biblical proof of that in just a moment. So uh, in a few days, and I've decided that we would uh, change up a little bit. Uh, in a few days, we will celebrate national uh, holiday, which is called Thanksgiving. A day most of us will give God thanks for his blessings. To most of us, this is the greatest part of all of Thanksgiving, and that is to give thanks and spend some time with our friends and also our families too. And so we I wish you a very uh, wonderful Thanksgiving, a Thanksgiving day. Today will be one of those days you got to get a head start on it as well. You know, afterwards, of course, we invite each of you to, to stay for our Mingle 3. Mingle 3, I mean, uh, meal plus 3. That means you get to eat. That's the meal. You get to mingle. That's the fellowship. And not only that, but we also get to hear about a different way of uh, mission work that's done around the world. All that together in one big, huge pot. And... That's something to be greatly thankful for. And you'll still get out of here early. So on top of all of that. So this morning, give me a few minutes. First of all, I want to give you for when you sit around that table so you'll have some Turkey Day trivia to go by. This year, there will be over 46 million turkeys that give their lives for that, for that dinner. That means it'll feed probably two, 200 to 250 million people. Maybe even more. Uh, depends on how big your turkey is. If it's a 20-pounder, you get more out of them. <laughs> now, some of you like different pies. So let me just tell you a little bit about yourself. If apple pie is your favorite, you love to, to celebrate thankful, thankfulness and family traditions. Now, you can tell me if this is true or not afterwards, okay? Okay. If you like a pecan pie, not a pecan pie, but a pecan pie is your favorite. You like that special nutty moments of life. A good laugh, a good story, and a sweet sinner as well. If pumpkin is your favorite, you look forward to Thanksgiving all year long. And if sweet potato pie is your favorite. You are as southern, as southern, as southern can get. In 1989, that's my next, my other trivia, was a first year president decided to uh, pardon a turkey. That was President George H.W. Bush. President Trump, one year pardoned two turkeys. I don't know if you remember their names or not, but it was peas and carrots. That's where their names, peas and carrots. And not only that, but 116 million of you will shop on Black Friday. Notice I said you. That is unless there are other extenuating circumstances that I might have to do it as well. But Thanksgiving is not unique to us. By that I mean, King David called it for all believers to be thankful and to have Thanksgiving in their hearts. And that's what I'll speak to you in about the next 15 minutes or so. Thanksgiving found in Psalm 95. We'll look at verses 1 through 7 in just a moment. Page 407 in a few Bible or 317. According to the book of Hebrews, since it's not written exactly that King David uh, actually wrote this above the, the, the psalm itself. But in the book of Hebrews, it does say that it was a psalm of David. So therefore, we, make, we know that David was the one that wrote this psalm. David wrote it, but he had a great deal to be thankful for as well. God watched over him in the fields as he took care of his sheep from lions and wild animals. God protected him from Goliath and all his relatives afterwards. God watched over him from King Saul who wanted to kill him. God gave, forgave him of sins committed against God. God helped him make righteous decisions. 
God made a covenant with him, an everlasting covenant, a right to make so that not only his house, but in this case his dynasty, all those who would follow him would have an eternal dynasty. And of course, Christ Jesus himself, being the son of David, would be the one that would sit on that throne. And King David had much to be thankful for, so he wrote it down in these, some of these things in this verse. In these verses. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. See, I told you, you cannot have Thanksgiving without singing. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great, is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel and bless before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of under his care are in his hand. David had thanksgiving all in his heart. And he wrote it down, and he comes out that way. I want you to notice how he helps us to do some thanksgiving. First of all, he says, you need to sing to the Lord. Oh, see, I told you. You ever sing on your own? You know, probably some of you sound better if you sing on your own. I know that. But others of you can sing with each other. But let's say you drive down the road. Ever decide to break out in song? I hope so. You know, sometimes God gives you just a joy to just to sing. And you don't care who hears you, you know, so you roll down the windows. If you do care, you roll up the windows. But singing is an area of which allows us to be thanks, have thanksgiving before God. Here in this church, you're now a singing church. You know that? Years ago, we were not as singing of a church. I mean, we love to hear the choir sing and somebody else sing, but we sat out there like bumps on logs. And we didn't sing that much. Now we get a chance to sing. And you ought to hear yourself sing. Do you know you are a better church today because you sing as well, because you allow that praise to come into your heart and life. Sing to the Lord. But also it says, shout joyfully to the Lord. I said, uh-oh, we don't shout in this church. You know, there are some churches that shout. Some Baptist churches years ago shouted. My grandmother shouted when she heard me preach for the very first time. Shut up! No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, she didn't say that. I tell you what, it was one of the blessings of my, my life to hear her shout. But sometimes we think it may not be quite as acceptable to shout. One thing is always acceptable. Say amen. amen. Oh, we need to practice. <laughs> All right, help me out now. Amen. Amen. There we go. We'll do it again. Hey, that sounds even better. Amen. 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 And if you want to get real religious, amen. <laughs> Need to throw that one in there too, okay? We can even sing that song. Did you know that? You know, there's a song about amen. Amen. Then it goes something like that. See? I told you. Hey. Amen, amen, hallelujah, amen. Okay, you understand. <laughs> it's always appropriate that when you hear something that really God touches your heart to say amen. Also, he, says, also he tells us to come before him with thanksgiving. Why is that? Because it affects everyone and everything that we touch and do. Even puts a smile on our face when we come before him with thanksgiving. Some people have made a living off of it. Of thanks or saying thanks. I'll give you an example. You tell me who I'm talking about. Thanks for the memories. <laughs> See? Yeah. Some of you know Bob Hope. or Well, you heard about Bob Hope. Some of you were uh, maybe not around at that time. How about, thank you, thank you, thank you. Didn't quite say it real well. 
Gomer Powell, I heard it. Gomer Powell. There we go. Um, they, they made a living off of saying, thank you. God asked us to become before his presence with thanksgiving in our hearts for all these. And then notice David gives us a few of those things that we can be thankful for. Now we've sung about a great many of them. I sit there and thought, I said, okay, well, am I saying this one, this one, this one, or this one in the sermon? And I'm not saying this one, this one. So therefore we're covering a lot of ground, okay, in a very short time. First of all, give thanks for your faith. There are seven names or descriptions of God in these seven verses. Lord, which is Yahweh, the covenant making, the covenant keeping God of gods, faithful to his word, and will always keep his promises. There's the rock of our salvation. That rock, our God, that salvation, that rock is our God, our Lord. Our Lord Jesus is the rock, is our salvation, and God is the rock that keeps it for sure. You see, that rock is one of those big rocks. It is a boulder. It's a, called tzur in the Hebrew language. It's one of those that does not move. It's one of those that cannot move. It is one that says there's a certainty in eternal salvation that you have. We sang about the great God that you and I uh, trust in and believe in. He is a great king. We think of a ruler, one that is, that is, is able to rule and make right decisions and help us to make right decisions. He is our creator who made all things, including the sea and the land and the, the deep places and the high places. He is our maker. He is the one that fashioned us. Now the word there means he fashioned us, meaning that he already created what he made us out of. And then he had, a, he had a, a, I guess I call it a recipe. He said, okay, I've got a recipe over here. And this recipe is called Raymond Edge. And I'm going to put this in, I'm going to put this in, I'm going to put this in. And if he really follows me the way I want him to, then he'll turn out the best recipe for that Raymond Edge. Now, there's not going to be somebody else like him because there's somebody else. You're somebody else. God has a recipe for you to be a man or woman of God in each and every one of you. I can't do your job and you can't do mine. But he has something very special for you. He is our maker. He is the one that puts it all together. He is our God. And here I think of a very personal relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father, our rock, our fortress, our help in time of trouble, our God when we call upon him, our Savior, our Redeemer. The list goes on and on. Our faith in our Almighty God our Lord Jesus Christ opened all of this up for us to have thanksgiving for the faith that we have in Christ Jesus. Second of all, I want you to notice something else. We ought to give thanks for our families. Now, it could be a lot of different families. David did not mention this particular word family in this psalm. But he did say, he said, the people of his, we are the people of his pasture. All in one family of God before God. We give thanks that we are his sheep. We give thanks that we are his people. We give thanks because the Lord has, has drawn us together to be that way. But something very unique about the family of God. It's made up of different families. Your family is different than my family. It might have one person. It might have two. It might have ten. It might have even more. Give thanks for your church family also. And this afternoon, this after service, we get a chance as a church family to worship together, to fellowship together, and be a part of just enjoying each other's company also. And we praise the Lord for that. What about your in individual families? Give thanksgiving for that individual family or your special family. Or maybe it's just you and God. This Thanksgiving, I'm especially thankful for my own family and my own heritage of my family. This past week, I found out something that I did not know before. One side of my father's family traces our history back to 1658, Virginia, across the river from Jones, Jonestown. And I'm thinking, you know, that wasn't too far removed from the first Thanksgiving. And I will... 
I will trust that my forefathers were also people of thanksgiving. Some of you can probably trace your history back to, but I thank God for my forefathers who lived, pioneered, I believe had faith in God to help in the establishment of the United States of America before it was even formed. Later, I thank God for a family that came to Texas that helped fight for the Texas independence in 1836. Others would fight in World War I, World War II. Even some went to Iraq. But more importantly, I'm very thankful. I'm very grateful to the Lord God that I have a heritage of preachers. My great-grandfather was a circuit-riding preacher in Texas, East Texas. He had different places that he went and preached. In fact, on the day in which he died, he was trying to trace down uh, his horse to be able to go preach at a place. And so, uh, and he got, evidently, he tried too hard to catch him. But anyway, the, uh, that was my great-grandfather. My father today will stand in a pulpit at 93 years of age and still preach. I have a heritage, and I'm very thankful for that heritage, for that family. But I thank God for the family that I have, that one of the emphases that my wife and I have always had, and I learned a great deal of it from her, is the emphasis on missions and where God has taken the gospel throughout the world. The Lord has been good to us, and you could probably stand and give a testimony of your own family of what God has done in your family and be thanks, thankful for that because we truly are the people of his pasture and the sheep that God takes care of. I want you to notice one other thing. We can also be thankful for our future. Our God holds the future of our lives, of our families, this church, from now throughout all of eternity. See, in verse 7, David says, we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. David draws a comparison of God who takes, and uh, as he takes care of his people, as David took care of his sheep as well. You see, a shepherd would go out, scout out the pasture first, all before he even brought his sheep there. He checked out the food, he checked out the water. He would check out the, uh, I don't know, the uh, enemies that might be there, wild animals, snakes, etc. All before he brought his sheep to the field. God has already scoped out your life. All he asks of us is that by faith we trust his salvation and trust his plan for it. Not only for us as individuals, but us as a church. So many times we decide we all somehow make the make the, the decisions ourselves. We're the sole reason for our own success. Oh, how foolish can that be? Our Lord is a great God. He's a great King. He's our Maker. He's our God. And He's the one that holds us in His hand. You see, David also in Psalm 79 Verse 13 would say something about this. Oh, he calls us, we are your people and the sheep of your pasture. But right after that, he writes the following. We will give you thanks forever. To all generations, we will tell of your praise. Psalm 79, verse 13. That's the way in which the order that you'll find it in the original language. But I want you to notice, we will give you thanks forever. Did you know that you're going to give thanks to God forever? You know, when you get to heaven, guess what you're going to do? Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, if you're one of those. I'm telling you, the Lord will put us in a place where we will forever and forever thank Him for all that He's done for us. The salvation that we have, the life that we have, the promises that He has kept. And we'll give thanks. But He asks of us to do one other thing. To all generations, we will tell of your praises. You see, every generation from the oldest to the youngest has a responsibility. It really does. It has a responsibility to teach that generation that we are to give thanks to God. 
that we ought to pray the praises that we have before God, that we will teach them to praise the Lord and what he's done for us. Each generation has that responsibility. And if we don't do it, no one will. It was once said of the difference between South America and North America. Settlers who came to South America came looking for gold. Settlers who came to North America came looking for God. And yes, somehow I think that shows the difference. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving for our faith, for our families, for our future that our Lord God holds in his hands. And that's just a few things. My guess is you could probably, if you started now writing down those things to thank the Lord for, it would take you days upon days to do so. But sometimes we forget about it. Sometimes we forget about thanking God. And when we forget about thanking God, guess what we do? We get away from God. We get so far away from God that somehow God doesn't mean as much anymore. Somehow God is not as, as, as close to us anymore. When we forget or fail to thank God for all that He has done, somehow ourselves become more important than God. And for sure, what God has planned for your life and for my life. Thanksgiving is primary in our walk with the Lord to give Him thanks for all that He has done. For everything, absolutely everything, has come from Him. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, Lord, we come to you today and Lord, we, we come into your presence. And I pray that every person under the sound of my voice today would come into your presence with thanksgiving in their heart. Oh, Lord God, that you are a great God, that you're a great king, that you're our God. Yes, all the things, you're the rock of our salvation, all those things that David was. But also, Heavenly Father, you're our, Lord Jesus, you're our Savior. You're our Redeemer. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that today would be that day that we not only remember, be thankful for what you have done, but Heavenly Father, for the families that we are enjoyed to be a part of, whether it's the family of God, the family of this church, family of individual families, or, or Heavenly Father, just one that you and, you and them were the only ones. Lord, each one of them special before you, and we know they are. May we be thankful for it. And Heavenly Father, if some, for some reason there's been those that have gotten away from you and somehow just has not truly had the faith in you to live as you would have them to live, then I pray, Heavenly Father, today would be that day that they remember to be thankful and return to that life with you that you had planned for them a long time ago. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, we come thanking you. And we pray, Heavenly Father, your divine guidance and blessing upon each and every one that's under the sound of my voice. In the precious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen and Amen. Maybe there's a public decision.